welcome to chapel this morning. Thank you to Maddie Grassland for her message and Team Ecuador for hosting. I invite you to stand for the call to worship. To God our thanks we give. To God our thanks we give. To God our thanks we give. Our thanks to God we give. To God our thanks we give. To God our thanks we give. To God our thanks we give. Our thanks to God we give. To God our thanks we give. To God our thanks we give. To God our thanks we give. Our thanks to God we give. To God our thanks we give. To God our thanks we give. To God our thanks we give. Our thanks to God we give. Please assume an attitude of prayer with me. God, thank you for bringing us to this place of worship on this cool Minnesota morning. Open our ears that we may hear your word. Open our eyes that we may see the work that needs to be done in this world. And open our hearts that we will be compassionate and reach out to those in need. In your name we pray. Amen. Today's gospel is from Matthew, the 25th chapter. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you, from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me ho food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. 
I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for joining me today, and a special thank you to my friends who came with me to Ecuador last spring for helping me chose chapel. Thank you so much. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Maddie Groslin. I am a senior pre-med biology major with chemistry and classical studies minors. I like to think that I'm a good person. I love Jesus, I love kids, and I love helping others. So when I heard about the mission trip to an Ecuadorian orphanage Dr. Bob Brunsveld leads every spring break, it was a no-brainer. Of course I was going to go. And so go I did. February came, and off I went to Casa de Fe in Shell, Ecuador. I was ready to help some kids in need. We worked hard all week out in the miserable humidity, lifting rocks and pushing wheelbarrows of cement. Every day was exhausting, but it was worth it because we were building a wall that was going to protect innocent children. But I hadn't come to Ecuador just to shovel cement. I was ready for special connections with the kids at the orphanage. At CASA, they pair every volunteer up with a child at the orphanage for one hour, a time that they call baby time. I was so excited for my baby time. This is it. I pictured myself bouncing a cute little Ecuadorian toddler, looking into their eyes, seeing them smile, and knowing that everything was worth it. I was paired with an 18-month-old named Mariana. All babies are beautiful, but Mariana was especially so. She was perfect, except for one little thing. Mariana, Mariana would not smile. I tried everything. I set, if I set her down for patty cake or peekaboo, she would wail until I picked her up again. When I picked her up, all she did was stare at me with the saddest eyes I've ever seen on a one-year-old. At first I thought, she's just nervous. I'm kind of a scary person. She'll warm up to me eventually. Um, but nothing worked. I had to make her smile. I had to have that heartwarming moment with a child. So I tried everything. I tickled her. I scouted out the coolest toys in the playroom. I did that thing where you like jump around with the baby and like sing and like dance and like make a fool of yourself. But nothing worked. She would not smile. Frustrated, I gave her to another volunteer for a moment while I used the restroom. On my way back, Christy, the volunteer coordinator, asked me how it was going. I told her it was okay, but Mariana didn't seem that happy. To which she responded, oh, Mariana. She's had a rough life. Then she told me a story that I would never forget. There was a family who picked up everything and moved out of a nearby town. For three days, the landlord kept hearing the sound of a meowing of a kitten that he believed was trapped in their abandoned apartment. But it was padlocked shut. Finally, he decided to do something and got permission from the police to cut the lock and rescue the kitten. But when he entered that abandoned apartment, it wasn't a kitten he found. Instead, it was baby Mariana, abandoned by her parents. My heart broke. It all made sense. Even though she was only 18 months old, some part of her understood that she'd been left behind by the people who should have loved her the most. Of course, she wasn't going to smile at me. Christy went on to explain that they'd been having a lot of problems with Mariana throwing temper tantrums whenever she was left alone in a crib, which they thought was because she remembered being left alone in that apartment. No wonder she cried so much. Every time someone set her down, she thought she was never going to be picked up again. I couldn't comprehend, and I still can't comprehend, how anyone could do that to a child as perfect as Mariana. I went straight back to that playroom, and I picked up Mariana because I wasn't ever going to let her go again. And so for the rest of that hour, even though my arms started to ache, I walked up and down the open areas of Casa holding her close. I no longer cared about making her smile, I just wanted her to know that I was there and that she was loved. I don't know why, but for some reason, I started singing to her. The song I chose was 10,000 Reasons, which if you don't know, it's a fairly popular Christian song. And I wish I could say that I started singing that song to her because I was being noble and I wanted to sing to her about God's love. But to be honest, I wasn't thinking about God at all. We had done that song at devotional the night before, and I just had it stuck in my head. But when I was singing those words, 
Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship his holy name. I had the most magical moment of my life. Little baby Mariana, who before this hadn't made any noise but the occasional whimper, started cooing with me. I was blown away. That's what I like to call a God moment, a moment when you feel how truly connected you are to something bigger than you'll ever be. In that moment, I saw how stupid I was for thinking that all I needed for a connection was a smile. This is more than anything I could have ever imagined or wanted. That moment with Mariana was worth building all the cement walls in the world. When I met with Pastor Ellie last week about the sermon, she asked what should have been a very simple question. Why serve? It was a good question. Did I only serve for a connection with Mariana so I felt valued by her? Basically, did I only serve for a reward for myself? My gut reaction was no. Then why serve? I didn't have an answer. Because that was how you get into heaven? Yes, I do believe that's how you get into heaven, but the idea of myself reaching out to others only to get score brownie points in heaven didn't seem like it covered it. The only answer I had for Pastor Ellie that night was, because it's the right thing to do. But why? Why is it the right thing to do? I struggled with that question all week. Honestly, I didn't think I was going to have an answer for today. But last night on my way home, when I was about to do the final writing of the sermon, it finally clicked. I serve because that's how I feel closest to God. As Jesus says to the righteous people in Matthew 25, I was hungry and you fed me, thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. His followers were confused because they would remember helping someone as noteworthy and famous as Jesus. But Jesus explains, truly, I tell you, whatever you did for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. This is Jesus' last parable in the Gospel of Matthew, and I can think you can argue that it's one of the most important. We show our love for God and the love we show to others. I loved Mariana, and I left a piece of my heart in Ecuador with that little girl that I will never get back. But I don't think you have to go to an orphanage in Ecuador to serve others. A very wise missionary in Ecuador named Jeff Freeman once told our group, be a, be a missionary wherever your feet touch the ground beneath you. Serving others doesn't have to be in the big things. In fact, I think God's in the little services you do every day, all the doors you hold and all the hugs you give. I think that's why you get warm and fuzzies inside after you folded someone else's clean laundry when their dryer ran out. Even if you will never have a connection with that person, even if no one will ever know what you've done, you feel good inside because in that moment, you have touched God. And God is the goodest and bestest and wonderfulest source of love and joy and warm and fuzzies there ever was. I'm not here to ask you to serve. You're here at Chapel at Concordia. I know that at least on some level, you are all good people. I know you're already doing and will continue to do good deeds in the world. I'm here to thank you. If I had time to thank every single one of you for all the good deeds you've done in the world, known and unknown, I would be here all day and I have Greek history at 1030. But I want you to know that you are appreciated. Every time you take care of the sick, every time you take a stranger into your home, every time you love someone else, you are loving God. And I haven't been through seminary school, I'm not a pastor, but I don't think God would be mad at me if I took this moment to speak for him. God says, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Heavenly Father, we lift up our brothers and sisters in Christ, all those serving in your name, and for the devoted hearts of the disciples spreading your love throughout the world. God of abundance, give us thankful hearts. Gracious God, we thank you for this beautiful world rich in nature, where rivers, lakes, and streams abound. Help us to be caretakers of your creation and to treat the plants and animals of the world with all the love that you have shown in creating them. God of abundance, give us thankful, thankful hearts. Lord, we pray for the strength of our leaders, that you might guide them to make wise decisions with you in mind. Help our world to put aside its conflicts and see what truly matters, that we are all beloved children in your heart. Bring peace to nations at war and unite our own community to serve you. God of abundance, give us thankful hearts. God of comfort, we pray for those who are weak and heavy laden, and for all those who have lost what they love most. 
Be with the bereaved, the oppressed, the poor, the lonely, and all those who need your love and comfort. God of abundance, give us thanks. Lord, Savior, you are our greatest friend and protector. Lend your strength to all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Lift off the burdens of stress, worry, and fear that weigh us down here on earth, and let us be confident in the knowledge that no matter what happens, you will always be with us, guiding us. God of abundance, hear us Lord God, we lift up all these prayers to you today, both those spoken aloud and those spoken in our hearts. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, I invite you to stand for a blessing. God of all that is good, increase in us a spirit of abundance and give us joy in our serving. In your name and for the sake of the world we pray. Amen. Amen.